Welcome back to the Crochet Karate. So it's my friends over here on Inspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today this is the Bavarian pillow. This is fitting over a 12 inch pillow form just like you see. This is exactly the Bavarian stitch and when you work on this you'll notice that it can go as big or as small as you wish. So let's talk about this design because I have a tutorial that is already filmed that you can use in order to make this pillow. So for this particular pillow you'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to play and your Bernat maker home deck yarn and you can use the clay and cream together in order to create this look. You could do it as a solid color if you want to. You'll get the textured look. I decided to play with some extra color. So what we have here is that this is the Bavarian square and each one of these sections that you see are made up of two rounds. So you have round one which is the very middle circle and then two which is jetting out just like you see. And then in the gray you have round one which is like half of the circles and then round two for that is the remaining of the circle and you just can just grow it out. Now I will recommend to you when you look at it is that you can see that there's one cream, saw, uh, the clay cream and then um, the clay once again. I found with myself it looked really big once I put it onto the pillow form as far as like when I draped it over but once I put it together it shaped beautifully and uh, so it's one of those ones that when you cross compare it with the other ones that we have done you'll notice that it looks a lot bigger than maybe it should but then once it's forming to your pillow it just looks beautiful. If it's too spacious then you'll see all these stitch work, open stitch work really open up to expose the form on the inside of here. Now just be conscious there's 300 watts of light blasting at this so if you do see the pillow form that's because the light is helping you to do this. So. so once you get your two squares done so you have a front face and a back face they're both the same and you're gonna stop at exactly the same spot. And then what you're gonna do is then just put the stitches together. So just put the, the wrong sides together, the inside and just uh, single crochet along each one of the chain one or uh, uh, stitches include the chain one space as a stitch and just keep on going all the way around. And you're gonna go three quarters of the way around and then you're going to slip in your pillow pillow and then what you're just gonna do is then finish it off and then fasten it off and that's your pillow. So without further ado I'm going to show you that tutorial now and it's gonna take you on how this concept's done. Once you understand how it's go gonna go together you don't really have to look at the instructions much and you'll see that it will all work out. So good luck and please enjoy your new pillow. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're gonna learn how to do this Bavarian square. Now I've already filmed this before about five years ago and I look back in the playback and I like you know what I'm really confusing the whole lot of you. I can see in the comments that people were not too happy with it and I pulled the video off I think a few months ago. So I'm doing a remake of this and I'm gonna simplify it because now that I've four years later you know now that I understand crochet even more is that it's so interesting that what was really confusing to me in the past is actually really simple to, for me today. So I'm going to be breaking down the components. I'm gonna be taking my time. So if you really wanna sit back and learn something today this is a great video for you to do it. I'm gonna show you how to do it as well and once I show you the key elements of what to look for I think that you'll eventually love this stitch. So let's start off and the first thing I want to get out of your head you are not looking at circles. Yes it looks like circles on the outside when you're going to do it. Yes it kind of does look like a circle but what I want you to visualize is change your mind right now and say those are squares. Okay so here is what it looks like without being attached to anything and we, we are going as we go but this is what it looks like. Yes so you think it's a square. What I want you to visualize that each one of these that appear okay are actually a square of four quadrants. So we have quadrant one, two, three and four with a chain one space that is in between each one of the quadrants. Once you can see it from this perspective this gets so much easier because what's gonna happen is that we're gonna play within the back posts of these stitches and then obviously then single crochet into these chain spaces. These chain spaces give us orientation throughout this entire project. So when you're looking at it from this perspective here you can see that I've come in and I've single crocheted into here, single crocheted into here and I've single uh, did some stuff over here and so basically when you really look at it from this perspective this is a quadrant and not really a circle. But what else is there about this that is kind of unique? So the next part of the puzzle is that when you go to see one of these circles or squares I should say is that what you're looking at is actually two rows. So if I just move this down a little bit. So what's happening is on, on one, one row we're coming all the way around okay. So and then we're coming across. So this whole 
a circle or a square is actually a combination of two rounds going around. So we have the first round coming doing the lower half and then when we come back around we're going to do the upper half. So you're not doing the entire circle or square as you're going all the way around. So in actual fact when I go to look at it from this perspective here, so in the first round when we come around we're going to do the bottom and then in the next round when we come around we're going to do the top. So I did it in two different colors just to illustrate that there's actually two different rows going on here in order to, for you to get that. But what is happening on the edges? That's probably most confusing to most people. So when you go to look at the edge or a corner, what's happening here is that if you go and do halves like this, look, it's not gonna balance. Something is clearly wrong here because in any way you turn it, it doesn't look like it's balanced. And even though it's a different color, even if you turn it like this, it still doesn't make sense because then the pattern is not gonna be correct. So what you're looking at here is that remember how I just said that it's in quadrants of four, one, two, three, and four. So in the first round when you're going to create the color, say we create the color yellow, what's going to happen is that in the first round, what's going to happen is that you are creating just one quadrant of the four, just like this. So when you come around with the yellow, you're gonna come up and then you're going to do just a quadrant and then continue to do the bottom half of the next, of, of the, of the yellow, okay? So when you come around and you're going to do the, the, the yellow in the upper color, when you come around the second time, you are going to be doing three quadrants around each time you hit a particular uh, corner of your afghan. So if you can visualize that the corners are always like this, so the first time you come around it will always just be one quadrant, the second time will be three. And then the remaining ones in the center between the corners will always have their halves on both upper and lower when you go all the way around. So when you get to this one over here, again, it'll just be a quadrant. Okay, the first time around and then when you come back around again, it'll be the upper and then there'll be quadrants, three quadrants over here. Just look at it from a quadrant point of view and then it will totally make sense. Okay, so now that I baffled your mind or I'm showing how brilliant I am, <laughs> I won't get that crazy today. But when we go to start off with, we're going to be doing it and we're going to be going all the way around just like so. So what you're looking at here is a combination not only of just one round but two. So we're, what we're doing is that we're creating just the middle section right here middle section, middle section, middle section and then when we come back around the second time we're catching all of this. So if we look at it from a quadrant point of view, the first time we go around we're only doing this section. So it's quadrant one, one, one and one and when we go to go around the second time we're doing three quadrants of each of those in order to complete it as we go all the way around. Once you get beyond this round and be get onto this, then you start seeing the commonality of the stitches so no, it doesn't matter how big that you're going to go as long as you understand that you, you understand the quadrant point of view, you can go as big a, on this as you want to because it'll all stay in balance if you look at it from that point of view. So without further ado, I'm gonna grab my, uh, my Karen Simply Soft. I'm gonna use a size six millimeter crochet hook today. You can use any size hook that you want. Um, you just have to make sure that the yarn complements the hook. So let's begin. We're gonna start off with doing a slip knot and we're going to create the first section and we gotta create the, the ring to begin. So in order to create the ring, all we're just going to do is just chain five. So one, two, three, four and five and let's just join that to the beginning chain just like so. So insert it to the beginning, pull the yarn through to form a ring. So there is the very center of your afghan just like that. We're going to start off by doing chaining of one. So we're gonna chain one and then we're going to single crochet right directly into the ring to begin. And what I'm about to show you will make sense and why this, why we're doing it like this. So we're going to do a four treble cluster coming up. Okay, so this is creating the first quadrant and the first quadrant basically the base ha over here has to stay wider than the top and so we're gonna do a cluster stitch instead. So to do a cluster we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four and five. And we're so now we're going to do a four treble cluster. So here's the trick. There needs to be four posts in between this piece and then the next chain that we're about to do. So it's gonna be a four treble. 
uh, cluster. And the thing about it is that we need everything to come to a point at the very top because it is the top part of a, cl of a cluster. So if you look at it from this point of view we are coming everything is gonna be toward the top because what we're doing right at this moment is that in the next round the top of this becomes the, the center of the next round. So it'll make sense in just a moment. So just stick with me. So we're going to wrap and wrap and coming into the center of the ring and we're going to pull through and we're gonna pull through two and two and hold. Okay, and you wanna continue to do that. So wrap and wrap, center the ring, pull through two, pull through two and two and hold. And do you see that you're gathering on the, the loops? That's exactly what you wanna do. Okay, so we're just continuing to do that. So we need a total of four posts here. So don't include this one when you're counting that four. Four is the magic number because four is the number uh, in one quadrant of the circle. And if you can remember that, you are going to be laughing. Okay, so let's get all of that in. So we got this so far. We now have five loops on our hook. And so we're gonna take our yarn and pull it through all five loops and we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And come back down into the center of this ring for a single crochet. So we started off with the single crochet and I said it would make sense in a bit. So we started off with the single crochet. We chain five so we can get ourselves up to the top of the, of the middle of the quadrant because what we're looking at, just a reminder, is going to be like this. Okay, so we're working our way to this, to the center of the circle. So don't be confused on which is the center of the circle. To begin again, we're just going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five, and do four treble cluster again. So wrap and wrap into the center of the ring. And we just continue to do that. And what I'm looking for, and I could be counting, but I'm really looking for four of the posts to be there before I say, okay, yeah, there's enough. So I'm continuing to do that, and you should have five loops on your hook. Okay, so there is my four right there. So I'm gonna yarn over, pull through all of the loops, and then chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Coming back into the center of the ring. So because the, the center is consisting of, when you look at the entire, you see that there's four squares, or there are four right in the middle. One, two, three, and four. We're looking for that. So we, if we're, if this is a, a quadrant, I guess if this is a quadrant, and this is one, this is two, so we'll need three and four. Okay, so let's continue again. So chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and wrap and wrap. And I'm gonna do my cluster. So my whole point when I looked at it from years ago of screwing up and really kind of um, getting all long-winded, uh, not that I'm not now, but what I was not visualizing is the quadrants and because of that I was forever counting stitches and I was getting off and uh, the, the filming it was really tough. Now that I got my five in there, pull through everything and chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Coming back into the center of the ring. If you're running out of space, just slide everything around. And we're gonna do it one more time. So one, two, three, four, five. And coming back into the center for the four treble cluster. So I realized when I was doing this last night is that there is a pattern here and when I looked at it from a quadrant point of view I really wasn't, um, I really was making this a lot more complicated than it was when you look at it from any other point of view. So now, now that I have my five loops on there, pull through everything and then one, two, three, four, and five and single, we wanted to join with the first single crochet that we started with. Just like this. Okay, so now you can see we have four. I'm just gonna just pull this up. So we have four, okay? So this here is the exterior like this, okay? See, and so when we go to do the next color, the green is gonna be filling in all of this space because the green right at this time is just this yellow. So as I just mentioned, I'm gonna put this down, is that this right now is the first quadrant right here. So this next round we are going to complete the rest of the quadrant. So this is one, so it'll be two, three, and four. And when you look at it from this perspective it gets a lot easier. Every time that you are on a corner 
of this afghan you are always going to have your quadrants. So you can actually see there's one quadrant here and then there's the rest of them up here. But when once you start getting your project and they start working together it comes more tighter. So in the very beginning of the screen is that every one that we're doing is going to be um, a corner of it. So we have this corner, this corner. So we're going for this entire round that yeah, we have to complete all three quadrants that are existing around. So let's begin to do that. So to begin we're going to chain one and then single crochet into the same stitch. And we're going to start off and uh, being able to get the rest of the quadrants done. So we need to get quadrants two, three, four done. So to begin before we start that we have to chain up two first and then we're gonna come into where everything is coming together. So we look at the cluster and this is here is where everything, do you see how everything's leaning towards there? That is your middle, okay? So you're going to do a treble. So you're gonna do a treble into that same where everything is joining in just like so. Once you do it the first time it opens up and then you can get the rest in there. And you're gonna do a total of that four times. So that was one. So you're gonna treble again for two. You're going to treble again for three. Okay and treble again for four. So this just completed quadrant number two. So if you look at it from this point of view see this is quadrant one, quadrant two. So to go from one quadrant to the other you just chain one and then you go back in again. So we gotta do the total of three quadrants this time around. And they're all just trebles. Okay. Just like this. So if I said that there was four quadrants you got one quadrant, two and three. So that means that there's one missing. So then to go to the next quadrant chain one and uh, treble again four times into the same center. So you're going to do this each and every time that there's a corner. Okay. So now that we have that done Okay, so you can actually physically see that you got almost a complete round circle or you got the complete square because I told you to visualize it as square. So quadrant one, you got two, three and four. So now you're just going to chain two and then come back down into the single crochet right where in between you see where it's joining and just um, single crochet into that space or into that stitch. And then we're going to begin again. So to begin again chain two coming and looking at the next cluster here go right into the center one there and we want to make three quadrants for this one as well. Okay and they're all trebles. And the reason why we're trebling is that because we're doing the back posts that actually does shrink the stitches as far as height. So by doing the, the trebles um, it makes uh, the stitch still nice and generous without really losing a lot of height. So once you get your four trebles in, okay that's one quadrant done. So you have one here, quadrant two, chain one and then treble again back into there for four times. It gets easier after this round I, I can promise you that. So you have the first quadrant, second, third is in, chain one. You got one more quadrant to go before you're ready to move on. So this one here is basically creating the look of complete circles all the way around the first of the middle of the afghan I guess. And then once you have that done chain two and then coming into the uh, single crochet that's in between. This stabilizes it and holds it into position so that the circle will stay open. Okay. So what I want you to do uh, continue in that same fashion going all the way around. So to start again just chain two. Look for the, the center of the cluster put in your three quadrants chain two and then single crochet down in and do it for again for a round. So continue that and I'll see you back in just a moment. 
When you get all the way back around make sure you do your chain your two and then you're just going to join it to the beginning single crochet that you started with and we're now officially done with this color. Okay so this is kind of what it looks like. Let me cut this for you. It kind of looks like a clover at this point. A four leaf clover I might add. And we are just gonna just fasten this off. Just weave in your ends just so that they're out of the way and securely into position and uh, you just wanna take your time in doing that as well. So what's gonna happen at this point is that we have their center in just like this. So you can see this is kind of really cool. So what's gonna happen in the next round is that we are gonna start going around this. So in the next round and this happens every other round is that we are going to do it so that we are doing the yellow here. So the yellow we're gonna be doing halves on the half moons on the inside. We're gonna do only one quadrant on the edge and half moons over here and then we're gonna be doing that all the way around. These are a lot easier and I'm gonna show you some tips about that. To begin the next round and this happens in every round that we are on this particular level. So whenever we're having to fill in the half moons on the underside this is what's gonna happen. So you're gonna come and look at any edge. Doesn't matter in this case it's all equal at this point but eventually it'll get bigger. And what I want you to see you have quadrant one, two, three and four. Pull it apart. Okay, so that you can physically see all of the four quadrants. So you can see one, two, three and four. What we're going to do is that when we go to start this project is that we are going to start off always right here. Okay, so we're gonna be starting there and then working to filling in this whole section first and then starting to move around. So always start right here. So let's begin and we are going to start off just like so. And I'm gonna create a slip knot because I'm just uh, kind of, I like it to be secure. So I'm looking for that again. So remember you're always going to start here on the quadrant. Okay, so just put your hook in, just wrap your, your strings around and pull through. And what we're going to do is that we are going to create only one quadrant of, of this. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna, and now that it's joined we are going to single crochet into the same stitch and then chain five. One, two, three, four and five. But this time what we're going to do is that when you look at the quadrant point of view you got four here and we're gonna be playing on the back posts of each one of these four. And But we're going to do a cluster at the same time. So what we're going to do is that we're going to wrap the hook twice for a treble cluster and coming in behind and grabbing that first post. Okay so let me get this string out of the way. Just let me show you that. Okay, we can bury that in later. So we're gonna wrap twice. We're gonna come in from behind going into the, po uh, around the posts and then just uh, start the, uh, to do the treble. So wrap through, uh, pull through two and two and hold. We're doing a cluster so we want to continue to leave those on the hook. Okay, so don't finish the stitch. So wrap and wrap and then we come into the next post from behind. It's the back post and we do our treble and we don't finish it because we're doing a cluster. And so we're doing all four of those. So when you're working on this entire project we're always looking at that there's gonna be uh, uh, four posts okay that, that's in a quadrant we're always gonna be working with all four. So wrap and wrap and coming into the last post of that particular quadrant and pull through two and hold. So you'll have five loops on your hook like you did before. Wrap the yarn pull through all of them and then chain five. One, two, three, four and five and then come down and I want you to single crochet right into this chain one space. So just, just go right around this whole thing like this. So here is your corner. Okay, so this is a quadrant one of the next one that's gonna be coming all the way around but you can only do just one quadrant. So when we're in the middle we have to fill in the whole upside down half moon kind of idea. But to do that we have to chain five first. One, two, three, four, five. So the next quadrant right over here there's four here and then we look at the quadrant over here and there will be four here. So we're gonna be playing within this four and this four every time we do a half moon. We are totally skipping over what's happening right here in the middle. So let's begin. We're going to do uh, this is an eight treble cluster. So we're gonna wrap around twice coming into the next post which is in the next quadrant and we are just going to do the treble cluster as normal so that we don't finish. There will be nine loops on this hook by the time I start collecting them as I go as I'm going across. 
Okay, so I'm collecting each one in that cluster or in that quadrant. And wrap and wrap. Okay, so now that I have these four done, that quadrant is done. I have nowhere else to go in that quadrant. So I have four uh, posts so far here. I've used up all four in this quadrant. So now I'm gonna just jump over to the next circle that's available. So even if there's multiples in the way, this is how you're going to do it. So if you look at it here, you've got the quadrant here has grabbed into this one here. This quadrant has grabbed into this one. So let's continue. So wrap and wrap and going into this one all the way over here into the back post starting at the first quadrant. And wrap and wrap going into the next post that's in that quadrant. Wrap and wrap next one. And I can tell this is the last one because I can physically see that there are four posts coming into that same quadrant. See, I can see that there's four. And I did already four here. So what I have to do now, and I did tell you there's going to be nine loops on the hook, which there is. Yarn over, pull through everything all the way through, just like this. And then yarn over, sorry, just uh, chain four times, or five times. One, two, three, four, and five. And then just come right into this chain one space. Okay, so you can physically see that each and every time. So on the finished example, you always see that one stitch crossing over. Do you see it there? See? It's gonna happen each and every time. So now that we're on the next corner, how we do it again is that we just begin to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And this time it's a four um, treble cluster. So the next quadrant is right on the edge. There's only gonna be four of them this time. So right on each one of the corners, no matter how big you're going to get, they're only in this particular kind of round, which happens every other round, is that you're only going to do one quadrant right on the edge. Okay, you'll have five loops on there. Pull through all of them and then chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then single crochet right into this chain one space. Okay, see how that's kind of making sense? So you got half a quad or half of the, uh, the square or the circle done here and these are just one quadrant each. So let's turn around, continue along. So what we just have to do is chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Why are we chaining five do you wonder? Do you see how it's stretching into the middle between the, the circles? This allows this piece right in the middle to always be in the center. So let's uh, just do the eight uh, treble cluster. So we're gonna collect the next four posts which are in this uh, quadrant. Like so. Okay, so those four are done and we're doing the underside of the half moon so we have to do the next four over here. So wrap and wrap and just immediately go all the way over there. I think this for this particular project getting uh, started is the hardest part but once you see the commonality of what you're looking for it becomes so much easier like so much easier. Okay so I can I can see I have my four reaching over here. I've got that whole quadrant covered. Got this one covered so I'm gonna yarn over pull through everything which will be nine loops and then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Coming into the next chain one space that you can find right here. And then we're on a corner again. So we're right on the very edge. So we're going to do one quadrant only. To remember how to do that is chaining a five. One, two, three, four, five. And then just only get the four. So wrap and wrap. Okay. So I want you to continue around just in the same thing as what I'm trying to show you. I'm trying to take my time and not um, turning off the camera too early um, because I think if I turn it off too early you may not get it. Okay, so there you got your five 
or five loops on the hook. There should be four in there which there is. Pull through and then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then coming down back into the chain one space. Okay, so there's basically you can kind of see it. The square is maintaining itself and then what I want you to do is continue in the same manner. So you're down doing the half moon. So you're gonna chain five first. You're gonna collect the eight um, posts. So you got four here, four here and then uh, collect them all. Chain five and then single crochet into the next chain one space and do another quadrant just like we just did and then just do the final. And I'll, I'll meet you back here when we finalize this round. So I'm just finishing up coming all the way back around and I'm just finishing up this final one here and then I chain five. One, two, three, four, five. We already started with the single crochet when we started so we're just going to join it there. And I'm gonna pull through as a slip stitch. So basically this is what it looks like right now. The orange does not look like it makes any sense at all but in actual fact you have half of it done right in the centers and then one quadrant on the corners and that's consistent all the way around. So let's begin the next row and it gets a lot easier from this point. From this point it gets a lot easier and all we just need to do to start is just chain one and single crochet into the same single crochet that you join with. So now that I told you that you have one quadrant done on the corner that means that we have to do three quadrants in order to finish off this square or round circle however you wanna visualize it. So we're going to do trebles and we're going to do them in groups of four. So coming into the center point where the where they're all coming together at the cluster is that you're going to put in four trebles first. And this will complete off quadrant number two. Okay, so these are the trebles. So we wrap and wrap. So that's quadrant number two done. So we're not quite done yet because we wanna get all the quadrants done. So this is one, two, chain one and then treble again four more times to complete the third quadrant. Okay. So we got that quadrant done. So you can see that even if I try to pull it around it would buckle. So I wanna make sure that you can kinda see. So you got quadrant one, two and three now. Chain one and then finish off the final quadrant which will be number four. When I did this years ago I was so confused on the corners like absolutely utter, utterly confused. Um, but when I saw it from a quadrant point of view uh, when I was looking at it and studying how am I gonna teach this uh, last night I thought ah oh, there it is. There is if you look at it from a quadrant. So once you get that done all you just have to do is single crochet down into this single crochet right here. And that uh, secures everything. So you, now you can see that the corner okay you got the first quadrant here which is your join and then the rest of it is all following. So the re remainder of this one here so when you're coming across and doing the ones that are over top in the middle section all you're just gonna immediately do is just um, uh, uh, treble right into the center where everything is joining. And you're gonna treble uh, four times to complete off a quadrant. So the ones in the middle will already have two of the quadrants done on the underside. So you only have to do two quadrants when coming up over top. So there is one so then chain one and then treble again four more times to complete the next. Just like that. Okay. So you see the quadrant one, two and then you have uh, three and four. Once you get that done we're just going to come and just single crochet down into the other single crochet that's here and then we're going to start off with another corner. So you are going to do this every time you're in between. Okay, so every time you're in between a corner so that would have done the same here and here. You just when you get your quadrants done just single crochet and then begin again for doing your two sets of quadrants are on the top. So let's uh, re let's remind ourselves on how to do another corner. So at this point we're at the next corner. So we're just going to start and trebling right into the the center cluster. And this time because it is a corner we're going to have to do how many quadrants? You betcha it's gonna be three quadrants because one is already done. 
I don't think that was a trouble. In fact I knew it wasn't a trouble because there wasn't enough stitches uh, <laughs> to pull through. Your brain automatically knows sometimes even if your hands don't do the work. Okay so there's one to so chain one and one meaning that there was one quadrant done. Okay I'm doing the next one so there's four more trebles to complete off the next quadrant. Okay so that's the next quadrant done so I got one, two, three, chain one and do the final quadrant. So what you're looking at is the same thing that you'll have to do continuous. Getting started is the hardest part of this. One, two, three and that chaining one space helps really to get yourself oriented if you're ever lost. So I have all my quadrants done. So just single crochet into the next single crochet that's down there and then just start again. And this one is a half moon so there's gonna be a quadrant one or sorry there's one, two and so we need to do three and four. Okay. So this is what I want you to do going all the way around. I'm gonna meet you back up after we get this and I'm gonna switch my color back just to get you kick started again uh, going all the way around. You already know what to do. It's just I'm gonna kick start you um, just to get you going and then you can do the rest of your afghan on your own. When you get all the way back around when you go to finish off this quadrant uh, step will already be done. So you're just going to join with the slip stitch in this beginning single crochet that you did like so. So just join it with a slip stitch and then you're going to weave in and fasten off your edge. So this is what it looks like at this particular point. Does that make sense? Makes a lot of sense. So we're gonna start off, I'm gonna kick start you on the next round. So the only difference between this round and all of the other rounds is that there's gonna be more spaces in the middle here between the corners and once you get that concept it's actually pretty simple. So without further ado let's just uh, cut our ends here. Okay and let's weave in our ends. You wanna do a nice job of that if you wish. One thing I like about the Karen Simply Soft, it's extremely, I can't even break this yarn with my hands, it's that strong because it's a premium acrylic. It's a fabulous yarn to work with. It's, it, they say it's Karen Simply Soft and it is soft. I won't, I won't deny that. So I'm just gonna just trim off my ends right now so that it gets out of my way. And now I'm ready for the next part. So let's begin our next part and we're, you can do any colors. I'm just gonna join green again because it's handy for me. But we're going to start off in the corner. It can be any corner if you wish. But what I want you to do, remember what I explained already before. Pull it apart. You'll see the quadrants. One, two, three, and four. Always right here. Okay, always right there. So just remember that. Okay, so let's just start it with a slip knot to have extra security. So you're just gonna go right around this chain one space right there. Okay and you're going to chain five. So one, uh, two, three, four, and five. Let's do our first corner. Okay so it only be one quadrant out of all four and again it's on the back posts only. And this is a, a cluster. It's a four treble cluster. So essentially basically every other one you're doing clusters and the other ones you're just uh, fill, uh, doing fan work really. Okay, so you want a total of your four posts that you can physically see. Remember that this first one of chaining five doesn't count. So you see your four, you've grabbed all four, you're good. Pull through, chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. Coming back in to the chain one space. Okay, and now we're going to do the underside. So you already know how to do this. It's chaining five. So one, two, three, four, and five and then you're just doing your eight treble clusters. So these four here and then these four here. Okay. So if I can do that properly it'd even be better. <laughs> I used a different yarn a few years ago too and I'm thinking the yarn is making a huge difference. I think I used a tighter hook too which makes it harder to get into the stitch work. So I'm actually pretty proud of myself here. So I got four here done. So I'm gonna move on to the next uh, quadrant over here on this one. So we're continuing to wrap and wrap. It's a treble. You 
you wanna make sure you get all of the plies when you go to do that. Um, if for example you, you accidentally go through some of the ply work and don't grab the entire post it makes a visual difference that you cannot deny. That was not a trouble. So wrap and wrap. And again I could tell that because the fact is that I have to pull through twice after I'm done that. So now I only pulled through once and I was out of stitches or out of loops. So now I'm gonna have nine on my hook just like so. I can physically see that I had four here and four there. So I can pull through everything and then chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then physically just come in to this next chain one space, single crochet. Okay, so this is the only difference this time is that you do that each and every time and then you start again. So when you go to do the next round what's gonna happen is you're gonna start it just like you did this uh, this orange round here. The only difference every time you do your fanning, okay, so you'll you'll come in and you'll do your four trebles, your chain one, four trebles in. You're going to single crochet into this spot. And so basically when you're coming all the way around no matter what, basically they, they are just joining in here and then you just keep on going. So as this square gets bigger that's the only thing that changes is that the amount of these in the middle because the edges are all handled in the same way. So hopefully that helps you out today and on behalf of crochet, the crochetcrowd.com and Yarn Inspirations have a fabulous day and we'll see you again online real soon. Bye bye.